Well, good morning. You're watching Morning at NTV. Now we're taking note. Early on, I hinted that uh, they're going to break it down for us dummies, <laughs> what blockchain is. And there's a story about how Walmart is trying to use the blockchain platform to actually have their you know, customers resell some of their purchased products. And now to the ordinary Ugandan, this is a big deal. In uh, a day, or actually tomorrow and Thursday, there'll be a conference on blockchain. So I think they're still in the information phases. So I thought, why not break it down for each of us to know how we can take advantage of the blockchain platform. Joining me is the chairman of the National Information Security Advisory Group. Can we just call you a blockchain expert? <laughs> Nua Balesavu, how are you? Great, did I get it you. right? Yes. I did. did. Fantastic. Did. And I also have Louise Wigget, who's the founder and MD of Global Trade Solutions. You're from South Africa. First time on a TV interview. Definitely. How is it so far? Okay. You're, <laughs> breathing. <laughs> You're breathing through it. I'm breathing Let's through it. Let's try and have fun through yes. this. So, Nua, I'll start with you. Uh, blockchain. I think there's is it cryptocurrencies, right? Mm -hmm. So there's mm -hmm. Bitcoin, and yeah. there's a number of Ugandans we've decided to just close our ears, yeah, like, ah, like la, la, too la, la, complicated, la, la, la. too much. <laughs> so why don't you just break it down for us to understand? So I'll try. I'll start by demystifying what blockchain is. Uh, blockchain is a technology that uh, houses a ledger, and so a ledger is, as many of uh, I'm sure understand, is a, a collection of transactions, and so. Um, it's, it's largely used in the finance world and where they collect transactions over a period of time. And so the blockchain is basically a record of transactions that's shared with everyone that's part of the network. Yes. In the simplest forms, that's what it is. Hmm. Now, because you're looking at transactions, the first obvious thing is that you can use it for money. Yes. And uh, hence the, the, the coming up of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. And so the difference between Bitcoin and blockchain is that Bitcoin is the first product of the blockchain. And, and it came into light in uh, about, you know, almost 10 years ago uh, when, when, when someone called in, infamously called Satoshi Nakamoto wrote a very famous paper that's openly available online right now on how you can have a peer-to-peer -peer cash transfer system. And so that was how to transfer cash from person to person without the need of a centralized body. Yeah. And so that is when blockchain, that's blockchain's coming out party. That's when blockchain came out from the techie fad to the, to the thing that it, it is right now. But then as we will talk more uh, at the conference and, and we'll be sharing more also on, on media, there is much more to blockchain than just cryptocurrencies. It can help in many areas that I'm sure we're going to get into. Okay, so the way we're explaining it is a, it's a platform. Yes. So once you have it, you can then have different other innovations exactly. that go on after that. Exactly. So exactly. We're, we're just at the starting phase. We're, we're literally at the cusp <laughs> of... <laughs> we're, at the, we're at phase one. Yes, yes. So we can grow to so many things. Exactly. And, 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 and uniquely, we are at this phase worldwide. So there is no one country... Also, we're not late to the party. No, we're, we're actually at the starting line with the, with the, with the best of them right now that's and great. so that's what we want to to spur Ugandans on right now to take advantage of this opportunity our young people can take advantage of this opportunity to start innovating because the, the the Facebook of the blockchain the Google of the blockchain is 10 15 years from now and so the people that uh, adopt it right now are the people that will benefit uh, in the future and so that's what we want to rally around okay so we, we, I wanted us to break it down because we have businessmen and women yeah. we have the government which implements different policies for us. And we have me and you, you know, the ordinary Ugandan who purchases and, you know, sells different things. Yeah. So if you are to break down how this platform is in one or two advantages to each of these uh, phases, yeah. how would it work? Okay, um, I'll start with government because yes. everyone, <laughs> it's, it's a big target. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. And, so, <laughs> uh, we, we, and, and for governments, what, uh, because it is an open ledger, it gives unique transparency. And coming from an information security background, uh, the, the best I can, I can compare it to is when you use your username and password to log into a service. You, you try to keep the service as secure as possible. So what blockchain does is that it adds steroids to that. It is highly secure, right. highly open. And so for government, you, can, you, you have a platform that can be embedded with trust, meaning that if there is any transaction that needs to happen, if it's on the blockchain, you can automatically trust it. So think about your land titles, think about tracking of drugs, think about anything that is of value and exchanging of value and this value needs to be recorded. That is an area that is going to be disrupted and the government is in that business of trust. Yes. And so that in, in many, many areas, agriculture is going to be disrupted by the blockchain. For business, again, tr making trade easy, um, one of the biggest bottlenecks for businesses is movement of money. 
when I need to pay X, uh, um, I have to pay in 30 days. It has to go through banks who le levy charges, especially for a country that imports as much as Uganda. You, you find that settlement takes five to six days, and, and that's a lot of loss in time when it comes to settlement. With, with blockchain-based solutions, settlement can happen instantaneously, meaning that the minute uh, 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 money is received at, at, an, at an exporter's port, then goods are dispatched okay. immediately. And so that save, increases business efficiencies, Definitely. both internationally, even locally. You know, when I give someone a check, I mean, kudos to BOU, now checks take two days, not <laughs> four. <laughs> yes. But my challenge to them is that, look, it can, it can be two minutes if it's on the blockchain. So a two days is still at a stretch. We're, we're still <laughs> at a stretch. We're getting there. We're getting there. Yes. But it's, it's still too slow for high-paced high business that is now online. I mean, if I need to buy a good online, I can't wait two days to get it. Okay, so, so from what you've mentioned, actually, then it does trickle down to the ordinary Ugandan. Exactly. Uh, Louise, you're from South Africa. I don't know. First of all, your economy is obviously <laughs> much better than ours. So, and it's a level playing field. We're all starting at the same time. I don't know if you can pick from how you think your market will do differently and how maybe just because you probably... Um, know about international trade we have many trade partners and if anything can make business efficient i'm guessing it will eventually trickle down to helping us improve yes i think you know um, i must compliment um, uganda and the uganda blockchain association because they've really done a good job yes. you know I, I think from a south african perspective um, we also in the learning phase and in a new phase so this is new to everybody but I think what Noah said is very true. You know, in terms of international trade, you want to have security and you want to have safety and you want to have dependency and surety. So really, if you're planning a supply chain and you want to take coffee from um, Uganda to, say, America, if you can ensure that that coffee gets there on the right date, it can be distributed and it can get to the shelf at the right time, it adds a huge benefit. Yes. Um, and in underpinning that is making sure that you do get paid and you pay your service providers on time. So that's really one of the underlying benefits. And it's not just for South Africa, I think it's for the world, the world you yeah. know. And, but it's also one of the frightening things because now you're saying, you know, I'm going to get paid like I'm making a WhatsApp call. I mean, <laughs> this money is just going to miraculously <laughs> appear. Yeah, yeah. And the, the interesting thing is, um, and no, I didn't share that with you, but the first blockchain ATM was actually opened in South Africa. Oh, yeah. Yes, um, in the last week. So oh, fresh. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> really, really fresh. Mm -hmm. So on the plane over here, somebody asked me, but how does it work? I said, well, I haven't really seen it, but my understanding is you... Um, uh, buy the, the Bitcoin mm -hmm. in this particular case and you put your phone in front of a, a printer and the it, gets, it gets uploaded onto your phone and there you've got money and you can right. do things. So You've said efficiency, mm -hmm. but I think I'm more keen to transparency. Mm -hmm. uh, my country is an amazing country, but we're also <laughs> huggled with the fact that we have a prob into land matters, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. and um, we're a country that everything has been so far documented on paper. And papers move from one person to the other. They're lost. They don't exist. Signatures were here. They were not here. You know, <laughs> so I'm looking forward to transparency. And I'm guessing blockchain gives that, not just with land and I guess with other things. Mm -hmm. um, should we be afraid of the transparency, especially for the African markets? Because that's not something mm -hmm. we're used to as well. Yes, I think transparency is one of the underpinning features of blockchain. Yeah. Um, and yes, it, it probably could make you afraid <laughs> if you're on the wrong side <laughs> <laughs> and you're selling things that you shouldn't be selling. selling yes. But I think the, the transparency, the, the concept around blockchain is that it is a, a community. So it doesn't necessarily mean that everybody is going to see everything. Um, you can elect um, in the more sophisticated environment that only certain people will see. Actually, help me understand that. So mm. you said access. So who has the access? If I'm the owner of that particular web network, mm -hmm. then who else is? So the, the, that brings me into a slightly technical thing, but let me try and explain it well. Yeah. Now, when we talk about the blockchain, there are different kinds of blockchain. There is a public blockchain, right. which, is which everything is viewed by everyone. So who would be using so, that? So now, like you, for example, right now, if you fire up a wallet on your phone, you become a node in that, you, you become a, a participant in that network. Okay. It, it is democratic. It's, everyone can be part of everything. But that has its advantages and disadvantages. So there are other types of blockchain. There are private ones. 
for example, if an organization like NTV could set up a blockchain in which it connects <laughs> its cameras, and that will be private to NTV. Then there are hybrid black blockchains. So some part is public and some part is pri as yeah. private. And so uh, from just picking up from the example you just mentioned, um, uh, what's happening in some countries actually in Africa is that they're putting their land title system onto the blockchain. So there's the public part because right now uh, it is a matter of public record, uh, the land that you own. That means I can, if, if, if Flavia has land somewhere, I can go to the land ministry and search for that land. So it's public record. Okay, so However, the trip that I've been having to make yeah, the menu. This, that, no, um, it is, it is, it you, is you fully... You pay someone to verify signatures. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah, I so now we don't, we don't have to go through that headache anymore because yeah. that headache is birthed out of the fact that we're dealing with paper. Paper can be printed. Paper yeah. can be photocopied mm -hmm. and stamped. Yeah. Something, you know. And signatures can be forged. So with the blockchain, one of the characteristics of the blockchain is what we call immutability. Mm -hmm. Once an, a record goes onto the blockchain, it cannot be deleted. Uh -huh. I'm concerned. <laughs> because no, it's the right way to go. Yeah, I'm concerned though because this is online. Yes. When you translate the internet for me, for example, I'm on Facebook and Trumsime Flavia, my image is there. And yes. someone else wakes up one day mm -hmm. and gets my image, opens Trumsime Flavia uh -huh. and operates the way they want to. Mm -hmm. And that's other simple, you know, yes. ways. Yes. We have hackers who can do uh, yeah, because big things <laughs> online. Yeah. And you're trying to tell me this, this is immune? It is going to be immune to that. This is why. Technology as we know it is centralized. And, and life as we know it to this point has been centralized. You have a central government, you have Facebook, you have Google, and these are custodians of all your information. It is not with you. You'll find that actually when you go to Facebook and try to download your digital footprint on Facebook, it's in GBs. It is huge. And they have, and that's the, one of the, the, the reasons they've been in this recent debacle. And so what the blockchain br uh, brings is that no longer do we have to depend on centralized systems. The minute you see, the, 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 or the blockchain gives you control of your information, that means if someone tries to create a Flavia to, to, to uh, account, it's going to be rejected automatically because she already exists on the blockchain. The entire network so of millions of computers. I'm Flavia to Musime, she's Flavia to Musime, which existed in Africa. So yeah. And anywhere else in yeah. the world, names are the same. Yes. Billy Jones, Billy yes. Jones. So then what happens? So now they will be given unique identities right. at creation. Right. And so even if they have the same name, there are certain other characteristics Aspects that, that, that will make them. Yeah. So and what that, we call a digital footprint. And yeah. that's the benefit actually of the blockchain is that you can have a lot of people with the same name same surname, but they are unique. And yes. th that is really what is blocked, what is the power of blockchain. The unique, yes. yeah, the unique characteristics, and then it can't be changed. Mm. You yeah. know? I think yeah. that's the frightening thing, is that record <laughs> is there forever and ever. <laughs> um, but it's the right thing. I think to um, touch on the, the land I issue yeah. is, um, you know, you want to know that when you buy a piece of land and it gets transferred into your name, that that's what it is. You're just one buyer, not, you know, in Uganda, no. sometimes land is owned by three people at uh -huh. a time and they don't really know. But yeah. not just in Uganda, we've got that in South Africa as well. You know, um, I can speak from personal experience where we wanted to buy some uh, a house and the house was actually didn't even belong to the person that was trying to sell it. Oh, okay. And happens a lot here. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then secondly, um, you know, when we eventually found out that this is a bo well, it wasn't a bogus transaction, it was just something that happened. And yeah. um, then to track the real owner and still try and make the purchase became, became a very difficult situation. Mm. So I think a, a good example, and we discussed it earlier, is um, Georgia as a country has put all the title deeds and records onto a blockchain. Um, all of them? All of them. And all the transactions actually hap happens on a blockchain. So referring to, you know, mm. running up and down, getting this one to yeah. do this and that, all of that disappears. Mm -hmm. um, so it does bring the cost down. It makes it easier for the normal citizen. Yeah. And that, that's a massive benefit. Um, so it, it, it's really, I don't think we mm. all worried, you know, what's it going to do. Yeah. Um, but it is really, you know, 30, 40 years ago, everybody said the internet, you know, what's going to happen? Thing. Yeah. 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 Thing. Yeah. Uh, and and now, the thing. Yeah. And now, I don't yeah. want my name online. Yeah. Someone said they, they, you need to go through an encyclopedia and flip and flip now. Yeah. It's just on your phone. Yeah. Yes. So times have changed. Um, um, before we go right into, you know, the conference and what to expect, I'm very impressed with the, the tech minds. 
mm. that we have in this country. Mm. You know, young minds are blossoming and they're creating all sorts of you know, innovations in the tech world. Mm. And um, are we looking at this being an opportunity for them as well to grow their minds? As you yes. said, we're on the same level field as everywhere. So we might be the next creators instead of just taking advantage. Yes, exactly. And, and that's what we want to harness at the conference. We want to bring out this technology and say, look, Uganda, this is an opportunity for us to leapfrog. Look, what, look, where, the US, <laughs> yeah. look where the U.S. and Europe got when, yeah. when, when they embraced the Internet early enough. The biggest tech companies in the world, literally the biggest companies in the world, are tech companies based in the U.S. because they embraced an emerging technologies decades ago yeah. and then harnessed it. And we're saying, look, Uganda has been given the opportunity now. We have all the right ingredients. We have a vibrant young population. We have a very tech-savvy young population as well. We're one of the most entrepreneurial countries in the world. So if you put all these mixes together, I mean, think about it. In the next 10, 15 years, who, which, which experts are there going to be in the, in the highest demands? I, uh, I'm a cybersecurity expert, and so uh, about a decade ago, no one was talking cybersecurity. Now, there is a, in just the U.S. alone, there's a shortage of one million cybersecurity experts just now. You'd be so surprised. Even it. here, we need them now. <laughs> <laughs> slowly but slowly, but uh, we're yeah. slowly running out of time. But sure. the good thing is that this conversation is going to be in Definitely. broad uh, terms at the conference. Yes. So it's happening tomorrow? Tomorrow, yes. Uh, we're starting with, uh, with, with our first uh, sessions. Um, Her Excellency Amina is going to be here. His Excellency, the President of Uganda, is also going to be there giving the keynotes. Uh, Professor uh, Dr. Bitangen Demo, who is the, blockchain, is the chairman of the Blockchain Task Force in Kenya. And, and that's an interesting thing. Kenya decided to embrace this and say, look, let's get the best minds, form a task force and see how the government can use blockchain mm, and AI. Point, and so the chairman of that committee, um, Dr. Bitan Nemo, is going to be here and, and is going to give a keynote tomorrow on how blockchain will transform Africa. Where and is this going to be? It's going to be here at the Serena, oh, okay. uh, at the conference center. And uh, it, it's, uh, some portions of it are going to be streamed live on our website, oh, africanblockchain.org. And um, yes, um, so and some people can still make it to Serena. Is unfortunately, the, we've run out of tickets. <laughs> 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 I mean, we have, but this is an online platform. We can encourage the live stream yes, because yes, they yes, do. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, exactly, and, and of course there will be clips. I'm sure NTV is also going to be covering some Definitely. of that and uh, some of the activities there. And then w this is just the first of many. We're okay, just opening. Uh, we we're just is just a grand bringing out of this technology. We want many people to engage. Thank you so much, Azza. Noah. Yes. <laughs> mm. uh, who's a, a, a blockchain expert and also from South Africa, founder and MD of Global Trade Solutions, Louise Wigget. Thank you so much. I'm you. I'm I'm twenty percent an expert now on blockchain. I mean, really? <laughs> <laughs> After this, well, <laughs> well then, <laughs> not too bad now. Yeah. Uh, on the ground, as we wrap up, I do have Andrew Chamagir. Can go back to you as you wrap up uh, this uh, segment. Oh, there you are, comfortable. <laughs> Uh, here by Zua. Just so you know, I had to experience the first hand kind of treatment that there's by Zua to know. Is it really happening the way he was telling me in the morning? Uh, do they spray the machines before they actually put them on you? And uh, yes, I can actually testify that happened. And a couple of people, they were part of the conversation on Twitter. We have Nyamongo Gomen. I hope I pronounced it right. We had Davis Okoth. We had Mariam Mumba and uh, road the number to thank you so much for being a part of the conversation just so you know you need to be careful what saloon do you go to and who is your barber and what do they use on your head before you go around running with dandruff and you ladies hitting your head every now and again <laughs> and then you scratch <laughs>